Okay, everybody. Jumping back into chapter two. Biosynthesis of fatty acids and other lipids. So our lecture objectives. So we're gonna be able to describe the importance of fatty acids and their major general functions. Know the energy sources and components required for fatty acid biosynthesis. Describe, differentiate, and compare pathways of beta oxidation of fatty acids and fatty acid biosynthesis. Know the site of fatty acid biosynthesis and site of beta oxidation. Describe the role of tricarboxylic tri transporter system to transport acetyl-CoA to cytosol and respective biochemical pathways and mechanisms including the enzymes involved. Demonstrate the sequence of biochemical pathways with special reference to acyl carrier protein, or ACP, leading to the synthesis of fatty acid, palmitic, for example, palmitic acid, chain elongation and desaturation, and demonstrate the biosynthesis of triacylglycerol and other lipids. Okay. So lip lipogenesis is the process by which new lipid molecules are biosynthesized. De novo biosynthesis. That's just literally just saying um, new biosynthesis within a living cell. And fatty acids are important components of lipids. So the ability to synthesize a variety of lipids is essential to all organisms. So the main pathway for the new synthesis of fatty acids occurs in the cytosol of many tissues, including the liver, which is the major organ, adipose tissue, memory glands, the kidney, and the brain. When we talk about the importance of fatty acids, a lot of this is just sort of the introduction to fatty acids, um, kind of what they're, where you're gonna find them and, and some other stuff. So we'll, we'll get into more of the, the actual processes in a little bit once we get through this. So the importance of fatty acids, the major functions, they are a barrier to the extracellular environment. Remember, we have a phospholipid bilayer, lipid being that um, other component which we need in order to produce the barrier for all of our cells. The major constituents of membranes, so the maintenance of membrane fluidity, and also anchors uh, membrane proteins. Storing storage of energy, coenzymes such as vitamin K. There's going to be our fat, um, our fatty enzymes. Um, it's a little bit inappropriate, but you can remember a fat deck. They are our vitamins A, D, E, and K are all of our fat soluble vitamins. We have our detergents such as bile. Transporters are dolichols, hormones, although there are a lot of hormones that need fats as well that are derived from lipids extracellular and intracellular messengers, such as eicosanoids and the PI derivatives. Eicosanoids, we'll talk a decent amount um, a little bit later about those and kind of their function and how we make them as well. So fatty acid biosynthesis reactions, reaction sequences are, first of all, endergonic. So we talked about how the breakdown of them is exergonic. And that's typically how it is. The breaking down of stuff to, tends to be exergonic, and the building of stuff tends to be endergonic. And they are also, it is also a reductive um, sequence of reactions. So it's a chemical, a reductive, meaning that a chemical process that describes the gain of electrons hydro, or hydrogen, or a loss of oxygen, or a decrease in oxidation state by a molecule, atom, or ion. So the required components for fatty acid synthesis, we need an acetyl-CoA, and that is the source of the first carbon unit. We need an NADPH as a reducing agent or as electron carrier. ATP is a source of metabolic energy, so of course if it's going to be 
an endergonic reaction. We're going to need energy to be able to put into it. So friend, that's going to come from ATP. Um, HCO3 is a source of CO2 to carboxylate acetyl-CoA. This is our source of our second carbon unit. Um, make sure you remember these ones specifically. You want to know where those carbons are coming from. Uh, and then biotin is a required vitamin for the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And remember, so our vitamins are our coenzymes. And then MN manganese is a cofactor for the acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. This is a metal. Metals are cofactors. So biotin is a coenzyme. Uh, manganese is a cofactor. Fatty acid biosynthesis involves condensation of successive two carbon units, also known as or there are C2R malonyl CoA. Sorry, that's a typo. That shouldn't be there. Fatty acid synthesis involves condensation of successive two carbon units. So malonyl CoA, a three carbon compound, is an intermediate of the fatty acid biosynthesis and serves as the donor of two carbon units, so C2 donor and the third carbon is eliminated as CO2. The end product of fatty acid biosynthesis is palmitic acid, which is a 16 carbon unit, a 16 carbon chain. So this is why palmitic acid, we talked about this in the previous chapter, this is why he picked it as the example. Palmitic acid is really important later on. It's kind of like the, the base fatty acid that we'll build off of. But yeah, so remember palmitic acid. Um, fatty acid biosynthesis is just not the exact reversal of the beta oxidation of the fatty acid. There are some differences. So now we're going to compare the fatty acid beta oxidation and the fatty acid biosynthesis. So remember our oxidation, we had our different steps, the dehydrogenation, dehydrogenation, the hydratase, and then our thiolase down here. Slightly, and it's slightly different coming back this way. We have a C2 unit donor is malonyl CoA. The NADPH is an electron donor instead of NADH is it being an acceptor. And then again, we have an NADPH being the electron donor. And the ACP is the acyl group carrier. And this is occurring in the cytoplasm, whereas the beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrion. So the metabolic pathways of the fatty acid biosynthesis are distinct. First of all, it is a reductive process. It occurs in the cytosol, and it use, utilizes NADPH as the hydrogen donor or reducing agent or electron donor. Uh, it uses the three-carbon dicarboxylic acid derivative malonyl-CoA as its two-carbon donor. And the growing acyl chain is attached to the acyl carrier protein, aka ACP, rather than to coenzyme A. So it employs entirely different enzymes, and it is independently regulated. So this isn't, this is not the same thing as when we talked about with a lot of like um, gl glycolysis going both ways, and there's a couple differences. This is a completely different process. So sources for fatty acid biosynthesis. We have metabolic pathways of glucose oxidation, fatty acid beta oxidation, amino acid metabolism, ethanol, ketone bodies produce, ketone bodies produce a common molecule, the acetyl-CoA, which is used as the starting material or precursor of fatty acid biosynthesis. Remember that part. That's going to be key. This will be asked in a couple different ways. But essentially, the answer is always going to be the same, that acetyl-CoA is the starter material for fatty acid biosynthesis. As because of that, the cytosol must have sufficient amounts 
of acetyl-CoA and NADPH. So the different sources of acetyl-CoA, it's generated by pyruvate dehydrogenase in the mitochondria, so in the glycolytic pathway. Glucose is converted to generate pyruvate in the cytosol. Pyruvate enters the mitochondria, where it is oxidatively decarboxylated by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to produce acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is also generated by the beta-oxidation of fatty acids. Beta-oxidation of fatty acids also finally produces acetyl-CoA through several oxidative pathways. And the degradative pathway of amino acid cat uh, catabolism, catabolism also generates acetyl-CoA. <clears throat> uh, majority of the time, we're going to be thinking about this one, the glycolytic pathway, because if we're making fatty acids, we're not typically breaking them down just to make them. So, uh, apologize, I need my water. So you can think of when we have excess amounts of glucose that we are breaking down, um, and we have an excess amount, or we have too much acetyl-CoA due to continue to break down the glucose, so we have way too much glucose in our system, and our storages are full. This is how then glucose eventually can be converted to fatty acid chains, or one way it can be converted to fatty acids and stored it that way in the body. Looking at the NADPH, that is, the source of it is from the pentose phosphate pathway, which produces the NADPH. Hopefully you remember that from last trimester. If you don't, you might want to jump back to one of the, to the videos from last try and just review over the pentose phosphate pathway. And then also the malic enzyme reaction produces NADPH. Transport of acetyl-CoA to cytosol and related biochemical reactions so the mitochondrial membrane are impermeable to acetyl-CoA. So then how is acetyl-CoA transported to the cytosol? So apologies, give me one moment. Okay. <clears throat> so the way that the acetyl-CoA is transported to the cytosol, it's, it's very similar to a lot of the other reactions that we saw um, within kind of transporting stuff across membranes that we, that we saw in Biochem 1. Essentially what it's going to be is changing it to different forms. So for example, like once we're in the cytosol, the citrate gets broken down to oxaloacetate and then to malate and so or or going back to pyruvate so then it can go back and across the across through. Um, and then we'll see like the alpha malate alpha ketoglutarate transporter um, or a citrate transporter. So it's 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 very similar to the other reactions that we've that we've seen. You'll just want to pause here and kind of go through some of these enzymes, um, write this process out so you can kind of just follow it a little bit and study it um, for whatever questions that he could ask about it. Just understand is essentially we're converting um, everything to, we're converting it to citrate because the acetyl-CoA can bind to the citrate the citrate it then goes across and then it will come, the acetyl-CoA will come off. Um, so getting it from the matrix to the cytosol. It's just using it, using those intermediates of the Krebs cycle as carriers to get it from the matrix to the cytosol. Uh, this will be the whole, the whole process. We'll go ahead and read through it. So this is the tricarboxylate transporter system is going to help transportation of acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol. 
So within the mitochondria, acetyl-CoA reacts with oxaloacetic acetic acid, or OAA, and produces citrate. So acetyl-CoA plus the oxaloacetate gives us citrate. Then we we'll go along with the end, and that uses the enzyme citrate synthase. So we'll want to remember to make sure we know the enzymes. Citrate readily crosses the mitochondrial membrane by a transporter protein to the cytosol. That's the, uh, the citrate transporter. In the cytosol, citrate lyase breaks citrate with the help of ATP as an energy provider for the cleavage process. And oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA are produced again in the cytosol. Now acetyl-CoA is available in the cytosol. And this gives us the whole process. And then we have to get the oxaloacetate back into the mitochondria. So the oxaloacetate produced in this reaction is reduced to malate by the cytosolic malate dehydrogenase, and finally is converted to pyruvate by malic enzyme. In this reaction step, catalyzed by malic enzyme, NADPH molecules are produced. So here's another source through the malic enzyme that we mentioned earlier that are NADPH molecules. We get those for the um, fatty acid biosynthesis. So then pyruvate is returned back to the citric acid cycle in the mitochondria and converted to oxaloacetate for further oxidation. So it's just that full, beautiful little circle. So now steps of fatty acid biosynthesis. So there are two major enzyme complexes, the acetyl-CoA carboxylase, and we'll also look at the fatty acid synthase. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase, <clears throat> in the animal systems, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is a 230 kilodalton filamentous protein polymer. That's just filler. Don't worry about that. No, it's the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Um, the single protomer, protomer form is inactive. However, the polymeric form is active enzyme. There's my mouse. This is what we'll want to remember. The polymeric form is the active enzyme. Make sure you remember what polymeric is. Having, this, uh, having the same elements combined in the same proportion, but different molecular weights. Okay, so polymer being has the molecular structure consisting chiefly or entirely of a large number of similar units bonded together. So the single form is active, the polymeric form is the active enzyme. So once they bind together, and um, once like the different parts of it, so the polymer part of it, the polymeric form, when it's all the different parts that are similar combined together, then it becomes active. Fatty acid synthase is a multi-enzyme complex. It is a polypeptide containing seven enzymes, which are bound to the acyl carrier protein ACP. So the first step, production of malonyl-CoA is the initial and rate-controlled step. Whenever we see this rate-controlled step, you better know it. So the production of malonyl-CoA is the rate-controlled step in fatty acid biosynthesis. And it is catalyzed by acetyl-CoA carboxylase in the following two steps. This enzyme is the rate-limiting step. So we have acetyl-CoA, bringing in, using that, remember we're using that biotin, and having to bring in the CO2 using ATP to create malonyl-CoA. Carboxylation of biotin involving ATP 
the biocarbonate the bicarbonate becomes covalently attached to biotin and thus produce produces an activated co2 the vitamin biotin is carboxylated and forms carboxybiotin which is the active form of this vitamin transfer of the activated co2 or in other words the carboxyl group to the acetyl coa to form malonyl coa um, is a biotin dependent enzyme or is a biotin dependent process and the acetyl coa carboxylase is a biotin dependent enzyme so this is that process this is like going into the actual specifics of it um, didn't quite understand that process read th read back through this a couple of times but essentially the carbon dioxide binds to the biotin makes the biotin into its active form which is carboxybiotin and that allows it to bind using the energy from the ATP binding the acetyl-CoA with that activated CO CO2 uh, with the activated biotin holding the CO2 to produce the malonyl-CoA Uh, this is talking about the functional regions, kind of what we just were talking about, the different uh, the, the functional regions of that whole trans carboxylase, um, the acetyl CoA uh, carboxylase protein. So it has a biotin carrier protein, it has a biotin carboxylase, and a trans carboxylase, which transfers the activated CO2 from the biotin to the acetyl CoA and produces the malonyl CoA. The regulation of this enzyme, so it is activated by citrate concentration. Citrate is an allosteric activator, means that it's binding to somewhere else, not to the specific binding site. And it increases the Vmax, or increases the rate at which this process occurs. Uh, dephosphorylation of the enzyme by insulin will also um, activate the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase is inhibited by polymetoyl-CoA. Remember that is the our very the very end of this whole process. We're looking to create um, the palmitic acid, that palmitic um, fatty acid chain. So then that is once we have enough of that fatty acid, then that's going to give us the feedback inhibition to stop this process from happening. And also phosphorylation of the enzyme through the CAMP-dependent pathways by glucagon, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. If we think back to kind of what the function of those were, if we think insulin is going to drive us creating more free fatty acids, glucagon, epinephrine, norepinephrine are the opposite, going to do the opposite of insulin and bring glucose and everything out of the cells. So we're going to be producing less of everything, um, less of the intermediates that we're going to need to create the fatty acids, and so they're going to inhibit this process. We can see all this stuff. Okay, so the regulatory effects of citrate and palmitoyl coa are dependent on the phosphorylation status of the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Dephosphorylated form of acetyl-CoA carboxylase binds citrate with high affinity and activates the enzyme at very low concentrations of citrate. Phosphorylation of this enzyme decreases the affinity for citrate and the enzyme is inactivated. Okay, we're getting to the part, we're getting, approaching that half hour mark. I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here with that first step. And we will jump back into this and continue looking at the rest of the steps of our fatty acid biosynthesis.